Everybody, how's it going? Today, let's take a detailed look at the 2003 Ford Mustang Mach 1. And this is going to be a detailed, in-depth view of the Mach 1. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust click and go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And for today's video, I'm at my dad's dealership, Car Connections Incorporated, as well as the official location of the Sopkala 4 LLC Business Center located in Reedsville, North Carolina. For more information on Dad's dealership, check out carconnectionsnc.com or follow Car Connections on Facebook. And for a more detailed look at the Sopkalo 4 Business Center, check out sopkalo4.com. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up. Let her run. The exterior color is known as Torch Red and features an all-black leather interior with perforations otherwise known as comfort weave and it's specific to Mach 1. It gives a unique pattern to the middle of the seats. Also a silver accenting towards the top. Gotta love that beautiful V8 sound. The Mach 1 features nice and smooth rack and pinion power assist steering and a full leather wrapped four spoke steering wheel with your cruise control on either side. And just like the Bullet Mustang that came out around this time period as well, it features a Cobra spec intermediate shaft in the steering system that gives a much better response with steering and overall better handling profile than the standard GT. You'll also notice a unique silver accent and retro style gauge cluster, a nice throwback touch to the Mach 1. The Mach 1 also can be had with your choice of gearboxes, either a standard 5-speed manual, which you'll see most of them came with, or if you were in heavy traffic or didn't feel like shifting a manual all day, they also had an option of a 4-speed automatic with overdrive, and low gear selection. And so we're going to flip on the headlamps, as well as the fog lamps, and the hazards. The driver's side window is automatic down. And we're going to check out the exterior, shall we? The late 1960s were an exciting time for Mustang. Not long since its 1964 debut, it had matured into the classic brawny muscle car that made it famous for performance. There were also a multitude of body styles and performance options available to adapt Mustang for a wide variety of purposes, from cruising to racing. Models like the GT350, GT500, Mach 1, and Boss 302 were legends. Their names have since carried on to this day through their spiritual successors. One of these was the return of the Mach 1 nameplate for 2003. An all new Mustang was actually set to debut for 2005, so Ford had gotten creative with special edition Mustangs such as the 2001 through 2002 Bullet, based on the famous movie car driven by Steve McQueen. The Mach 1 would follow a similar concept, but unlike the marginal performance boost of the Bullet, the Mach 1 would borrow more performance from the SVT Cobra and a hefty dose of throwback styling. Originally, the 69 Mustang Mach 1 was one of Ford's high-performance model Mustangs that could be had with three available engines, 
a 250 horsepower, 351 cubic inch Cleveland V8, a 320 horsepower, 390 cubic inch V8, as well as the Top Dog 428 Cobra Jet V8, producing a very underrated 335 horsepower. Just like the GT500, in order to decrease already rising insurance costs for high performance muscle cars. When the new Mach 1 debuted for 2003, it borrowed the same 4.6 liter dual overhead cam 32 valve V8 that once powered the SVT Cobra. By then, the SVT was carrying 390 supercharged horses. This gave the Mach 1 quite a power bump over the standard 260 horsepower GT. And even though it didn't benefit from forced induction, it still made 305 horsepower. Not bad for 2003. So this begs the question regarding what's different. Well, the Mach 1 isn't just a set of decals and wheels. Sure, it has the Cobra-derived V8, but it also has some unique hardware not found on other Mustangs. Ford improved the low-end torque by a marginal 3 pound-feet, but also decreased the RPMs necessary to achieve peak torque by 750 RPM compared to the Cobra. This means that the Mach 1 could actually reach peak torque at 4000 RPM, while the Cobra reached it at 4750 RPM. They did this through the addition of high-flow cylinder heads that were also fitted with intake cams from Ford's 5.4 liter V8. The addition of modified exhaust cams and manifolds also worked in complement with the cylinder heads to give it a bit more grunt off the line. The most recognizable feature is the classic shaker hood, made with the same tooling as the original. Towering above the cutout in the hood, this cold air induction system grabs the air and channels it directly into a twin bore 57mm throttle body and into the high flow 4 valve aluminum heads. As far as the handling, the body was lowered by about half an inch, with a modified suspension that's not only stiffer than the GT, but also features stiffer Tokiko gas shock absorbers, while still retaining the GT's 26.5 front and 23mm rear stabilizer bars. This gave it a better handling and cornering profile than the standard GT without making it too harsh. It also features the Cobra's rear axle with 355 gears. Larger Brembo brakes and more robust upgrades for the optional automatic finish up the handling upgrades, while the overall design remains similar to the GT. Styling was also a big deal that made it truly reminiscent of the 69 Mach 1. Flat black graphics across the hood, the classic shaker intake, side skirt graphics, deeper chin spoiler, and a flat black spoiler gave it a more aggressive stance, while the Heritage wheels 17 inch mimic the classic Magnum 500 design. As I said, the unique Heritage wheels measure 17 by 8 inches at each corner, wrapped in 245-45 tires. Standard are four-wheel ventilated disc brakes with larger Brembo units up front for increased stopping power. The rotors measure 13 inches in front with two piston calipers and 11.6 inches in the rear with single piston calipers. Stopping distances with this setup is a short 119 feet. As far as the suspension, the Mach 1 came standard with an independent front suspension with McPherson struts and a live axle out back, not to mention the stiffer shocks and lower ride height. Overall length is 183.2 inches with a width of 73.1 inches and a height of 52.3 inches. Total curb weight is right around 3,465 pounds. And we're going to pop the hood. Like we've touched on before, the Mach 1 features a unique Cobra-derived engine, a 4.6-liter dual overhead cam 32-valve V8 with an iron block and aluminum heads. With a compression ratio of 10.1 to 1 and a 6800 RPM redline, the Mach 1 produces 305 horsepower at 5800 RPM and 320 pound-feet of torque at 4200 RPM. This translates to 0 to 60 times as low as 5.3 seconds and quarter mile times of 13.8 seconds at 102.5 miles per hour. As far as fuel economy, the Mach 1 requires premium fuel while the GT takes regular. With the engine hardware upgrades, the Mach 1 actually retains better fuel economy over the GT. With a 15.7 gallon tank, it achieves a respectable 17 miles to a gallon in the city and 25 miles to a gallon on the highway. As far as the interior, comparing the standard GT to the Mach 1, it didn't really change a whole lot as far as how everything's put together and styling is concerned. There is some unique retro throwbacks to it, which I'll talk about in just a second, but build quality is kind of what you would expect out of this particular era of American muscle cars. It's a little plasticky. The door panels do feature a little bit of padded material. All of your power windows, power locks, and power mirrors are also located on the door, with a little bit of storage and carpeted portion down below. The seats are power sliding and manual reclining, and feature a unique leather pattern known as Comfort Weave. This is similar to the type of pattern that they used for the late 60s muscle cars and also found in the Mach 1. 
Think of it as a simulated weave pattern with ribs coming up across the middle of the seat, nice amount of lateral grip, and silver accenting as you get towards the top. Black threshold guards as you come across the sill with Mustang written down below, as well as unique aluminum sport pedals specific to the Mach 1. The steering is manual tilting, and the dash features a modest amount of pattern material on some of the touch points, but retains a little bit of the retro style, especially with the unique gauges. So let's go and see if she sounds. Gonna shut her up. Now the Mach 1 featured just about all the options for 2003. One of them, including a premium Mach audio system, no pun intended, it's actually the premium audio system for all of the Mustangs across the board for that era. AM FM with an in dash 6 CD changer with overall pretty good sound quality, especially for 2003. visors with vanity mirrors, manually dimming rear view mirror, up top there's also a little bit of storage with a little cargo net, and your interior illumination with reading lamps. You know it's pretty amazing when you consider the technology and how it's progressed over the years in comparing this 2003 Mustang to a brand new Mustang. Everything is just so simply laid out, especially with the climate control, it's just simple rotary knobs. Fan to the left, temperature in the middle, and all of your different zones and front defrost off to the right. Down below, you have your rear defrost next to your traction settings and fog lamps. 12 volt power outlet down below, as well as satin silver accenting coming across the center stack and a riveted trim coming around the gearbox housing specific to the Mach 1. Chain storage in front, as well as two cup holders that can be adjusted, your e brake, and a padded armrest with a little bit of storage and also an extra power outlet. Like you saw earlier, your classic font gauges, all accented in satin silver with your temperature and fuel off to the left, your voltometer and oil temperature off to the right, and all of your warning lamps with display below the speedometer cluster. Headlamps and display lighting brightness to the left, and your turn signals, high beams, and infamous wipers are located in one stalk down below. Plus you gotta love the shaker intake popping itself over on top of the hood. Alrighty. We'll go ahead and shut her down. We'll check out the back seat real quick. All you have to do to gain access, there's a little lever right there. Just pull up and flip forward. I'll show a little bit more of the back seat when we get to the other side. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? As far as trunk space, the Mustang is no heavy hauler, but it's respectable at around 10.9 cubic feet of space. The back seats also have the ability to fold down, and it extends back to either side so you can load up in a little bit longer items. It's also lined in carpet with your spare tire located underneath the floor panel.
passenger seat is fully manual. There's also two little straps up top that allow you to fold the seats down if you need a little bit more cargo space. As far as getting in the back, as you'd expect in some of these older Mustangs, back seat room is pretty limited. Taller passengers probably aren't going to want to sit back here. I'm about 5'10 and my head's kind of cocked to the sides and I don't really have any leg room, so <laughs> you could just kind of be the judge of that. Lockable glove box, your trunk release, and a modest amount of space. The original Mach 1 was a legend in its own right. With throwback styling, great performance, and a comfortable interior for the day, the 2003 Mach 1 is sure to be a collector. Limited production of 7,500 units and strong resale value will most likely solidify that in the future. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this detailed look at the 2003 Mustang Mach 1. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.